Now, aid and IMF, what damage have they really caused Africa? Or do you think they are to our advantage? Well, no, obviously no. Um, we have to understand the relationship between the with, between Af most African states and most of these international financial institutions, especially those that were established uh, at the Bretton Woods Conference after the uh, the Second World War, obviously, precise to be more precise. Africa was given a role, a uh, role that was based on exploitation, a role as uh, suppliers of commodity and, and cheap labor and also cheap commodities. Now, we have to understand the pattern of exploitation that African and Africans have gone through, um, um, a pattern that is based on subordination and, and exploitation, from slavery to colonialism to imperialism to now globalization, all of them with the same aim but taking different forms. That is why we need a new generation of leaders who understand uh, these undercurrents to try to revisit and recalibrate our relationship with the West, but also with the East. And you have to understand that now when it comes to this aid and most of these forms, it's not only the West, it's also the East. The Chinese are coming. Turkey is having um, high, very serious um, hegemonic ambitions, obviously in, that sphere, in a sphere of influence. They are also coming to Africa. We have India and Brazil, so Africa is like a, it's, it's like it's like a, a pawn, uh, if I, if I may use that term. Since the scramble of Africa in 1885 in Berlin, when world leaders, European leaders, sat and cut the African continent into pieces of cake, like a, like a cake, and giving away um, valleys and, and 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 territory of places they've never been been to. Um, dividing societies and disrupting the way we live our lives. That pattern is still continuing, um, Oscar. And until and unless we see, we open our eyes and wake up from our slumber and understand that this, the world out there is not as easy as we think. They don't give you aid because of they want to give you aid, but because they want to help you. They have an interest. So Africa has to rethink its relationship with the West, its relationship with the WTO, with the IMF, with the World Bank, with China. We need to really start to look inwards now as Africans. Africa has enough resources to harness, to ensure that our people live a dignified life, to even provide everything we need for ourselves. The Congo alone, the amount of energy the Congo River Basin can produce, can light the whole African continent. I mean, just take three countries in Africa. If you take Nigeria, Kenya, Congo, and South Africa alone can move the African continent. I mean, uh, there's nothing that we don't have in Africa. It's the richest continent on earth in terms of mineral resources. But why are we so poor? Why are our people living so much poverty? Why is there so much conflict in the African continent? Why are we expecting a looming environmental and demographic catastrophe? Why? Because of poor leadership, Oscar. We need to really get the right leadership, the strong leadership that understands the uh, this undercurrent, understand these problems and make sure we harness our resources in Africa to make sure that we now create our own financial institutions in Africa to make sure that we have an African approach, African solution to Africa's problems. Just look at the COVID-19, Oscar. Look at the stimulus packages uh, that the G20 countries have produced for themselves. America in the $2 trillion. You go to UK, $400 billion. You go to France. You go to Japan. And all these are within the regional context. What has the African Union do? What have Africans done to come up, uh, to, to have a, a, a kind of a, a unified force to fight COVID-19? Even where I come from in Senegal, uh, sorry, in Gambia, Senegal and Gambia are like one, uh, two nations, two states, one nation. We share everything in common. Our people face the same kind of problems, uh, the same poverty, the same security problems, everything. But we cannot even have a unified force to fight COVID-19. That is the problem of Africa. And until and unless we integrate our economies, until and unless we create new financial institutions that are fit for Africa, that is built for Africa, and also to try to help ourselves and solve our own problems will be in the hands of the IMF, the World Bank. And, and we saw the damage they've done. Uh, we don't have to go back a long way in history. We saw what happened after the 73 oil crisis um, that brought the world market uh, down. We saw how African countries were struggling to survive. Some African countries needed bailout, otherwise they would have collapsed overnight. The, that brought in that ushered in the so-called structural adjustment programs. I mean, to whose interest was that? Uh, we still on that. Since Africa got independence, we've received almost more than a trillion dollars of aid that has come to the African continent, uh, far much more than what was given to Europe 
for reconstruction purposes after the Second World War III Marshall Plan. Yet, our countries are backward. We still live in poverty. Our people are marginalized. There is structural violence. Our young people are idle, frustrated, no jobs. We cannot provide jobs for our people. We cannot do nothing for ourselves. And I think that is the unfortunate bit. At least it's time for us to do some soul searching, Oscar. Look inwards, harness our resources, build our own strong institutions, uh, make sure that we integrate our economies, and then we can be able to build the Africa we want, Oscar. Thanks.